Building highways is what we do, but environmental protection during road construction is also important. You, the contractor, have a role to play in not only building your project, but in working with TxDOT to continue the Texas tradition of protecting our lands. Welcome to the Texas Department of Transportation's training on environmental management systems, or another way to put it, welcome to TxDOT's EMS. This program will help us protect the environment as roads are constructed. As a contractor, it is important that you understand what the EMS is all about and how the construction project you have been awarded needs to work with TxDOT's EMS. In this training, you will learn about several important topics. These include, what is an environmental management system? What is TxDOT's EMS policy? And what are some potential environmental resources and environmental requirements that may be impacted on your project? We will also discuss what you should do if you think you have an environmental problem and how monitoring and correcting problems help us meet our goal to avoid environmental violations. Environmental management systems were developed from early total quality management systems to improve work performance. They are based on an action circle of plan, do, check, act. Included in this circle is the idea that there will be continuous improvement. It is not a stagnant system. So every time the EMS is put into action on a project, you also look for ways to make it better. There are many EMS models. You may have heard of EPA's performance track, or even the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality's Clean Texas, or possibly your own company's EMS program. But whatever EMS is used, certain parts within the management system are universal. The EMS says you must have an environmental policy and you must have procedures for how you will comply with environmental laws. To communicate these environmental requirements, we must have things like training, record keeping, and emergency preparation. To keep the overall EMS working well, you and TxDOT must make regular inspections and constantly look at ways to make your project better environmentally. Having an EMS means that the TxDOT team has to work hand in hand with its contractor's construction teams. Let's look at a few of these parts that apply to the EMS and how they apply to your project. First up, policy. A policy is a statement of environmental standards and an organization's commitment to environmental stewardship. It is always signed by top management. TxDOT adopted an EMS policy that fully commits the organization to implement an EMS and to integrate environmental considerations for each road construction project. This policy has been signed by TxDOT's executive director and shows that TxDOT management is committed to this system and to comply with environmental laws. Since they are serious, then everyone on the team, TxDOT staff and contractors, need to be serious too. Please review the policy until you are familiar with its contents. You should already have been given a copy of the policy. Included in the policy is a commitment to the procedures of the department and that includes effective communication. TxDOT tells you, the contractor, what is expected under the EMS and you should tell your construction team what is expected of them. If you have any questions about how the EMS works or where to get more information about the EMS, contact your TxDOT project engineer or on-site inspector. Another part of the EMS is knowing the environmental requirements that apply to your project. Lots of laws and regulations can apply when a construction project begins. Which ones apply depends on a number of issues. Type of land, conditions of the terrain, time of year, proximity to water, and so on. Your project plan set details the environmental requirements for your particular project. 
Let's look at just a few of the environmental requirements that may impact a road construction project. There are environmental requirements for surface and groundwater, wetlands, wildlife, habitat, hazardous materials, cultural resources, air, and noise. It's important to know which ones apply, what they require, and how. By following the EMS, you can stay in compliance with them. One major requirement is protection of water. Water may be the most important of all natural resources and the most sensitive to contamination. Water in the ground, in creeks, in streams, in major rivers, and even in little creeks like this, must be protected from pollutants caused by sediment and runoff during highway projects. Associated with some waters are wetlands. Wetlands are among the most ecologically valuable places on Earth. Wetlands are where many plants and animals reproduce and where they feed. Having many different kinds of plants and animals is important for our natural resources. Wetlands also act as filters for contaminants that may occur in surface runoff. This means they can help clean up the water before it flows into lakes or seeps into groundwater that gives us our drinking water. Wetlands vegetation can also act as a sponge, which means it can help reduce flooding. That's why Congress passed a law in 1972 called the Clean Water Act, which protects both water quality and wetlands by making sure that contamination does not go into lakes and rivers and creeks. Today, the state of Texas enforces that law, and we must follow it. One of the most common kinds of pollution created from building a highway is runoff and sedimentation. Dirt, oil, grease, and other things can wash into creeks and streams. This is bad for the water and bad for the plants and animals that live in or near that water. Controlling erosion and sedimentation means putting together a plan to set up a variety of controls called Best Management Practices, or BMPs. The contractor will work with TxDOT to comply with a plan called a Storm Water Pollution Prevention Plan that details BMPs. BMPs like clearing vegetation in phases, reseeding cleared areas when we are done, and putting in controls like these silt fences so that sediments will be allowed to settle out and not go into the water. The Storm Water Pollution Prevention Plan includes inspecting the BMPs to ensure that they are working properly. Should you see that the Storm Water Pollution Prevention Plan is not being followed, for example, a silt fence is full of sediment, then contact your TxDOT project engineer or on-site inspector. In addition to water and wetlands, the law requires us to protect plants and animals. For example, to follow a law called the Migratory Bird Treaty Act, TxDOT will limit clearing of vegetation during nesting seasons of migratory birds, and most birds are migratory. That means you cannot cut down trees if there are active bird nests in them. If you see a tree with an active bird's nest and it is due to be cleared, contact your TxDOT project engineer or on-site inspector. If your project is in or near an area that has been determined to be habitat for endangered or threatened species, more strict limitations will likely apply during your project. You will have to work closely with TxDOT's construction inspector to comply with these requirements. Your project plans will identify areas that must be safeguarded for a special habitat and species. Also, environmental requirements under the Clean Air Act might apply to your project. One of TxDOT's main goals in its mission is to improve air quality. How? This can include limiting how long construction equipment can idle, or using low sulfur fuels in your equipment, and of course, minimizing dust. Your project plans will detail dust control for your project. 
If dust is a problem, contact your TxDOT project engineer or on-site inspector. There might also be noise requirements that apply to your project. Your project plans will show areas where work hours may be restricted. There might be a complaint that your project is making too much noise. If there is a noise complaint, contact the TxDOT project engineer or on-site inspector. Cultural resources, including archaeological sites and historic structures, can also be impacted by highway projects. TxDOT is committed to following a law called the National Historic Preservation Act to protect our state's history. This means that prior to clearing, an archaeological survey may be performed, or if cultural artifacts are discovered during clearing, steps must be taken to preserve them before work can continue. If you find artifacts, things like broken pieces of pottery, arrowheads and other stone tools, bones, shells, old glass bottles, etc., contact your TxDOT project engineer or on-site inspector. The project plan details emergency procedures for archaeological issues. The plans will also show protected areas for historic structures, including property boundaries, historical markers, even a sidewalk, and other protected landmarks, such as cemeteries. Finally, there are various regulations that pertain to hazardous materials and hazardous waste. The environmental study for your project is likely to have identified potential hazardous materials such as underground petroleum storage tanks or asbestos that may be located on the project site or adjacent to the project. Armed with this information, we look at where hazardous materials might be when we design the highway. Before any parcel can be bought for highway right-of-way, a detailed study called an environmental site assessment must be completed. If any evidence of prior contamination of soil or groundwater is found, recommendations for cleanup or avoiding the contamination will be included in the report and noted in your project plans. Another goal in TxDOT's mission is safety. We do not want workers to be injured by working around hazardous materials. Should you smell or see anything that looks like contaminated soil, water, or other material, contact TxDOT's project engineer or on-site inspector. These regulations also apply to spills that may result from heavy equipment leaking oils, overfills during refueling, or even poor housekeeping. Details about what to do in case of a spill can be found in the project plans. Should a spill of a product like emulsion, diesel, gasoline, lubricant oil, or other chemical product used in building the highway occur, contact TxDOT's project engineer or on-site inspector to make sure the spill is properly cleaned up and any bookkeeping and reporting is completed. For any environmental issue, water, wildlife or wetlands, cultural resources, air, noise or hazardous materials, the key is to ask a TxDOT representative or an inspector if you are not sure what to do. All of these EMS parts are important. In fact, you are doing one of them training just by looking at this video. But right now, we want to focus on two of the most important, roles and responsibilities and communication. A highway project is a complicated undertaking with a lot of potential problems. The key to success is to be aware of and follow all the environmental requirements that apply to your project. As the contractor, your main role is to make sure your construction crews understand what an EMS is and how it applies to everyone. The bottom line is that we want to avoid environmental violations on this project and on every textile project. Avoiding violations is important for several reasons. It is the law and part of the project's environmental requirements. It is one of TxDOT's main commitments and violations can mean delays in the project, which we do not want. 
We can avoid violations if each member of the team understands the environmental requirements involved and knows what to do under their own EMS roles and responsibilities. That is where training comes in. Training your crew is a very important part of the TxDOT's environmental management system. You need to understand how important water quality, wetlands, and wildlife habitat, hazardous materials, and cultural resources are, how to protect them during construction, and just as importantly, that those who work under you understand the same things. Which brings us to the other important part, communication. The EMS ensures that these environmental issues are discussed and reinforced throughout the entire project, not just at the beginning. You must continually communicate with your crew about what to do. At the same time, you must effectively communicate with Texta to make sure this is being accomplished. The final parts in our EMS include monitoring and corrective actions. This means regular inspections performed by you and by TxDOT, quickly fixing environmental problems that could cause non-compliance issues, keeping records, and following TxDOT contract plans and specifications. This brings us back full circle to the continual improvement mentioned at the beginning as plan, do, check, act. So let's review what we have learned. We learned what an EMS is and identified key parts of an EMS. We learned about the various environmental requirements that may apply to this project. Requirements like laws that protect water, plants, animals, air, and cultural resources. And laws that protect us from being exposed to excessive noise or hazardous materials. We learned what to do if you have an environmental issue. That is, to contact the TxDOT project engineer or on-site inspector, and always to check your project plans. We learned that the contractor's role and responsibility is to ensure that the construction team understands the EMS and the project's environmental requirements. We also learned that communication is critical to correcting environmental problems to maintain compliance. Finally, we learned that an EMS means continual improvement and management's commitment to the goals and practices of the EMS. The TxDOT EMS policy clearly shows those commitments. Soon, as drivers move down the highway corridor that was once your project, they may not be aware of how much we did to protect the environment. But if they look closely, as they cross the rivers and streams, or pass by the historic farmsteads and communities that remind us of this country's rich heritage, or see the undisturbed habitat and vegetation, they will see an environment that has been protected with the help of an EMS, and one that is part of our Texas tradition. It's a great way to build highways in the 21st century.